Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and in this episode, I am going to start the extremely daunting task of wiring the Alvarari from scratch. All right guys, welcome back. And uh, for those of you watching, in the last couple of episodes, I've been working on the grill section on the front end of the Alferrari. And uh, I've finally now gone through and finished the 3D printing of all of the grill sections on the front of this car. So all these little bits are, are all done. I'm really happy with how it turned out. And um, uh, seems like a lot of you really liked it as well, thought it uh, really came together well. Um, I'll put a link up above if you missed it so you can catch up and um, if you haven't subscribed and you're enjoying this stuff, please subscribe, it does help us out. Going back to the 3D printing, I'm just still blown away that I can spend only you know a half an hour, an hour, whatever, designing up things that I can actually just hit print and then suddenly I have a, a physical thing that is useful and usable on the car. It is, uh, it's really amazing. And uh, yeah, a lot of you uh, sound like you're, you're going to give it a go as well because it is that easy, it really is. Um, moving on today, I have the extremely daunting task of wiring this car. And the Alvarari has no wires in it whatsoever. It is completely unwired. There is no body loom on this car of any kind. So uh, I am gonna go about making that from scratch and um, to say I am apprehensive is, um, is an understatement. But uh, we're gonna get stuck in. So I've been spending a fair bit of time sitting down and drawing up a basic wiring diagram. And um, I'll put that up here so you guys can have a look and, uh, and show you what I've got as a basic starting point that is definitely far from complete. I am just doing the basic uh, body loom to start with so the lights and uh and basic systems to start with and then um there's other bits that i'm going to have to work out that are slightly more complicated and i have to tackle them one by one um i looked around at different fuse boxes and different uh basic wiring setups that you can get around the place and um it's it can be quite daunting trying to work out uh, how to do, how, how to set up this system from scratch. And I looked at getting a PDM or a PDU, um, which is basically a power distribution model, module uh, or power distribution unit, depending on how you uh, term it. And a lot of those are quite expensive. And then one of my, uh, one of my mates, uh, Brooke in Canberra has actually used one of these little things, and this is a tiny little uh, PDM actually designed for a motorbike that is a wireless unit that's relatively affordable, much cheaper than the, um, the, the car units, and he's used it successfully on his, uh, on his car uh, to run the basic systems. And this is also a Bluetooth unit that can be, uh, you can have wireless start and, uh, and uh, sort of immobilization and all the rest of it, and all in this tiny little PDM. So basically what this does is this replaces your standard fuse box. So you don't need any fuses or relays anymore. This does all of it inside. Um, in my case, uh, this car is more complicated with all these extra systems, so I am gonna have to have some separate relays and stuff as well, but at least for all of the wiring and the ignition and all the rest of it, it's all done by this. And uh, basically, you've got your, uh, your input side and your output side, you put all your inputs in, and if you blow a fuse, it trips basically a breaker and, uh, and will switch off that circuit, and uh, it will light up and tell you that there's a circuit that's out. And uh, you can just turn the car key off and turn it on again. You can also uh, go through an app on your phone and control everything via an app. So it's all programmable and all um, quite a, an interesting way of doing things. So basically, we just set the, the power and the ground to this, all the inputs in one side, outputs the other side. So for example, um, we have your indicators, so you just have your switch from your indicator comes into one side and uh, it's turning your left indicator on. This has an inbuilt flasher in it, so it will then uh, send the wire on the other side to 
the indicators or uh, circuit on, on the other side, so the front and the rear, and side repeaters, whatever you have, and, uh, and this will make it flash and, uh, uh, and run that whole system. So quite a handy little thing, and tiny uh, and light, which is handy on the car where I'm running out of space. Uh, so um, that's where I have been doing a lot of planning in the background over quite some time, trying to sort of get my head around how I'm gonna do this. And um, it's gonna be split into sort of two main groups. It's all gonna be interlocked, but obviously there'll be the body harness and there'll be the engine wiring harness with the, uh, the Link ECU, which is what I'm gonna be using to run this Ferrari engine. I'm not even gonna bother trying to use the factory um, Ferrari uh, loom and ECU. ECUs. Um, I do have them. Um, the ECUs themselves are actually quite valuable and there's two of them. Basically the uh, the technology at the time when they were running this engine was run as two four cylinders and uh, it basically ran two of everything. So um, I'm not going to even touch that. I'm going to keep it all as a uh, straight aftermarket uh, with the help of Link I'll be getting that running. But that's a job for another day. Before I get into doing all of um, uh, wiring, just, just randomly throwing wires everywhere, I really need to find mounts for every single hard point component in the car so I know where I'm gonna run the wires to. So first things I need to do is I need to get out my, um, uh, I need to try and find a place for this uh, and a place for a bunch of the other little systems that I'm gonna be putting in the car. As I mentioned last week, I'm gonna be putting central locking in the car. I need to have the central locking unit mounted. I need to have the ECU mounted. I need to have the relay box and, and relays. There's a bunch of things I need to mount. So let's get stuck into that. So then we can start getting my head around the craziness that is the wiring. Okay, so I went through and uh, sort of worked out where I'm gonna place uh, most of the units. I'm gonna actually put most of the stuff on the driver's side. Originally I thought I'd go on the passenger side, but now there's the, the heater box and the air conditioning and all that sort of stuff. There's actually not much room left on the passenger side. It's all full, whereas actually on the driver's side, in behind the power steering unit and, uh, and sort of up on that, uh, that side, there is some space. So that's where I'm gonna mount the uh, ECU and other bits. The ECU comes with this sort of mounting bracket and I don't want to just have bolts coming through into the engine bay because that's not how I roll. So um, what I've done is I've gone through, I made these little uh, standoff brackets. I made two of these brackets that I can um, uh, bolt on or weld onto the car and then bolt my um, mounting bracket to that. So I've got these nice little standoffs. They sit under there, they're nice and discreet and hidden. So um, let's put these into the car and then uh, do the same thing for the little PDM and the central locking unit. Okay, so you can see here, I've got my PDM central locking and uh, in behind the power steering is the base plate for the Link ECU. So that will all fit in there nicely, hidden out of the way. So let's move on to something else. Okay. 
All right, so as you just saw, I stole the battery out of Harry as a, a bit of a mock-up, but the, this is where the battery is going to live in here in the uh, in the boot, and then up on the shelf up the back, I've actually uh, managed to order myself a 12 volt uh, air conditioning compressor, but I put just pulled it out of the box just then, and it's got a big hole in the top, so I've got to send it back. It's going to be a bit of a pain, um, but at least I sort of know the rough size, and I can mock it up and get it to, uh, into the car. Um, it's actually got a, a rubber mounting panel for it, so it's actually going to sit on the shelf just behind the battery, and that way I can directly connect it to the battery. It'll all be in this uh, sort of rear location, which works out really well with my uh, condensers that are directly underneath the boot here. So all of the plumbing is relatively um, close together and then just running the lines probably through the interior of the car uh, up to the front so that all of it is all connected up. So the next step I think is to build a battery tray for the battery. That's probably not the battery I'm going to live with um, but it gives me a good base to start with. All right, a nice solid battery tray. I've got some holes here for uh, a mount I'm yet to get, which uh, you yeah, know, just the uh, the bars that sit either side, and I can uh, bolt the battery down and the battery, if I can get it in there, fits beautifully. So that is going to do the job just right. Let's put it in. All right, so uh, now I've got all the hard points in the car sorted out. It's time to work out exactly where I'm going to run the wires to get to every single part of the car and to join everything up. Now, to make things more difficult is uh, I don't want any wires to pretty much be seen in the engine bay at all. I mean, most of the engine is going to be run by the uh, the, the link ECU, so that's a mostly separate loom uh, that will be running that. So uh, we're going to handle that at another time. But uh, the rest of the stuff, like the headlights and stuff, I'm not going to run it through the uh, the engine bay. I've got to run it up uh, hidden so that uh, you don't see any of it. So what I'm going to do to get all the layout is uh, I've got this old rope that I'm going to use as um, basically a template of where all the wires go. So I'm going to run this around and then I'm going to cut and join um, at each joining point so I know where, okay, yeah, like a, it'll start at the ECU, it'll run down to this headlight, there'll be, uh, I'll put a little join or a little, little um, at least a little mark here and label it and saying, okay, we're at the, uh, um, the headlights and indicator and then run along again, okay, other headlight over here and then um, do the same through to every single point of the car and then have a rope version of what my loom needs to be. Now, it's not gonna have every single wire in it, obviously, it's just gonna have all of the branches and uh, and then we can sort out where the wires go once we've got the, uh, the basic shape ready to go. All right, so I've uh, run my rope as far as here in the center console and I've been scratching my head for the last 
quite a while, almost an hour, I think, like running different scenarios in my head, trying to work out where I'm gonna run the wiring to get to the back of the car. So I'm not actually sure because this, I never had any wiring in it, but I'm assuming that the wiring originally ran down sort of on top of these arms on either side. There's a couple of little tabs where the uh, uh, wire was held in, which would have been fine for the original car because there's only at the back some tail lights. There was nothing else there. That is not the case in this car. This car has the battery in the back, which requires very large cables to go all the way to the front. It also has air conditioning lines that are gonna to have to run through the center of the car somewhere as well. And obviously a bunch more wiring. So that was never going to work running it along here. It's just too much volume of stuff. What I'm uh, picturing is, uh, and what, what I've always thinking is, because this tunnel in this car is offset towards, um, in this case, the driver's side, because this car was originally built as a left-hand drive car, uh, they just had some more space on the left-hand side of the car, whereas this right-hand side is tighter. So I'm thinking of running down the left-hand side of the tunnel, which is where there's a little bit more room. But then when we get to sort of back here, I'm having a look under the car, and there's nowhere under the car with the movement of the suspension and everything else to actually sort of go through and go into under the car. So... Um, I didn't, I wanted to try and sort of keep this as neat as possible in the back here. There isn't going to be a back seat, uh, as you can tell by the roll cage. So what I've got to do is I'm going to try and sort of make some sort of path to come through the center of the car uh, and then through into the boot of the car without it looking horrible. So um, that is my next challenge. And um, the way I think I'm going to do it is I might actually build a little tunnel through here is drill a hole through this panel here and then come back out here as opposed to trying to get up over this lip is if I can drill a hole and run the uh, everything sort of through this hole and put a pipe in there so I can run the uh, uh, the wires and the aircon lines and everything through a pipe that sort of joins up these two sections to try and keep it sort of low and also um, the path relatively straight and then uh, run along here and then also this panel at the back here has actually got like a, another false panel underneath it. So um, I, I can sort of drill through here and probably put a pipe from here through up to the um, uh, the floor of the boot and then I can run all the, uh, the parts through there. And then when I finish out the interior, I can sort of build panels to cover up that stuff. But trying to keep it as neat as possible is the challenge. So let's start marking out, drilling some holes and putting in some pipes to run some stuff through to the back. Okay, so uh, as you can see here, the old bits of uh, exhaust pipe uh, work quite well. So that was a whole lot of work, and it was extremely difficult to get back in here to uh, to do the job. It's it's in. It's not the prettiest. Um, very difficult to uh, try and weld in there. As you can see, there's spatter and stuff that I'll try and clean up later. When it's on the rotisserie, hopefully I can sort of get into the car a little bit better and tidy up some of these bits. 
So that was a heap of work, but it now means that I can finish running my rope all the way through to the battery and uh, continue trying to lay out my loom. All right, well that was a whole lot more work than I really expected, as always. Um, particularly having to make paths for the loom everywhere, but now I actually have the entire map laid out of the direction of everything and, um, and all these little branches coming off. So what I did is I cut my rope and joined it in sections so that I've got my branches where they go off. Now I didn't do every single uh, ending for the rope. So for example, here I've got uh, right door. So I know at the end here, this is where the loom ends and I know there's gonna be speakers coming out of here. There's gonna be um, electric windows. There's gonna be probably electric window switches. There's gonna be bits and pieces all over the place at the end of these things but at least I know where uh, to branch off from at the end of each of these uh, parts. As for my wiring diagram that I've started drawing up I'm going to elaborate with uh, onto that over time as I lay it out and as I um, develop this more I can get that as a comprehensive wiring diagram that can stay with the car and uh, I have to give credit to Superfast Matt for that the, uh, he did a really great video on wiring your car from scratch and uh, I stole some ideas from him particularly using Keynote on the computer just to map it out and get a basic diagram going um, but yeah definitely for me physically laying it out is uh, is helping me get my head around it and uh, when I get on the bench that will uh, definitely help me out some more now I have even as I've gone through here I've realized now that I've missed a couple of bits and pieces I still have to put another relay box in under uh, the dash here somewhere and uh, I also have to get to the starter motor and the reverse switch on the gearbox and the speedo sensor and stuff like that so there's still a few little bits that i need to tackle but uh that is gonna have to wait for next week because we're out of time so uh, i think that means it's time for fun facts with mrs jeff Hey guys, 1957 saw the Scaglietti interpretation of the open top Ferrari 250 GT with the California Spider. Designed for the North American market, the car had an aluminium boot, bonnet and doors, or I guess hood and trunk, and it used the 3 litre Colombo V12 from the 250 Tour de France race car. 50 of these long wheel base cars were built until 1960 when the short wheel base car superseded them. This short wheel based version became one of the most recognizable classic Ferraris when it was featured in the 1986 film Ferris Bueller's Day Off, which incidentally is one of Jeff's favorite movies ever. <laughs> Interestingly though, none of the cars used in the movie were actually Ferraris. They were kit cars made by a company called Modena Design and Development. The hero car for the movie was actually built as an automatic as apparently Matthew Broderick couldn't drive a manual at the time. You may also be relieved to know that the car that flew out of the window to its death was actually just a shell car made purely for that purpose. You'll be relieved to know that no cars were actually harmed in the making of that scene. In total, 106 250 Californias were built, one of which sold in 2015 for a record 18.5 million US dollars. The cars used in the movie were a little more affordable, one of them selling last year for $400,000. All right, so uh, yeah, this, episode has been hanging over my head for a long time actually getting in and tackling the car's wiring is a very daunting task but um, now that I'm going through it I'm actually seeing more things that I've sort of it's it's coming together better 
uh, actually doing it rather than just planning it all out on paper, um, which is always the way, at least with me, I need to see it and, and touch it. It, it, makes it, uh, it, it. it makes it easier to sort of map it out, which means I know there's still some more wiring and stuff I need to buy, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll cross we'll, that bridge. We'll, we'll tackle that when we get to it. Yes. Yes, just enjoy what you've done so far. Yes, exactly. And I know I've got some interesting 3D printed uh, grommets I'm gonna have to build to uh, block off the the hole I put into the rear boot section because uh, that needs to be sealed, at least uh, for Australia. We have to make sure that the fuel cell is completely separated from the uh, the rest of the car. So that's uh, all part of it, even though standard, the fuel tank is sitting in the bottom of the boot and there's holes through the parcel shelf. That's not acceptable as far as the uh, engineer is concerned. So anyway, we'll uh, patch them up and move forward. We have very stringent rules and regulations here. Yes, yes. Very stringent. Do what you have to do for the country. I know some, some of your countries are much harder and some are much easier. Some of the stuff I see online of people making cars for the road. <laughs> that, none of that would fly here. So no. anyway. <laughs> All right, well. Um, Please like, subscribe, let Jeff know what you think. He yep. loves reading your comments. And if you want to see the videos that ads a day earlier, please follow him on Patreon. Yep. And uh, Facebook, Instagram. Yep. You get to see things like the... Uh, the Rockster that went started for the first time this week. Really? So uh, if you haven't seen that video, check that out. It's, uh, oh, I was so excited. Big, that big, big excitement. This so. one is going to be even, oh, wow. But uh, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> thanks, guys. Go. We'll see you next time. Hi, guys. 1957 saw the Scaglietti bonnet, boot, and doors, and <laughs> I'm just, were actually Ferraris. They were kit models, kit designs, kit cars. Kit cars. Interestingly, no. Two fifty. Shush! Not I'm thinking. No, I'm. I'm. I'm thinking. It's my process. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah. <sighs>